a revolution for change and why it's not all on me. Hey, ladies, I'm back and I have an update. Today's just going to be a little bit of a ramble, Um, but I'm really excited. So first I'm going to share, I'm like, what am I going to talk about? First, I'm going to share an email I received from a podcast listener. So a few episodes ago, I said, if I've made an impact in your life, let me know and send an email to support at heatherchauvin.com or on Instagram. And I got so many amazing messages and emails, and I'm just so incredibly grateful. There's a reason why I did that. And it wasn't just self-serving. What I'm noticing and what I'm finding is that we have a voice. We have desires. We have things within us, messages that want to be expressed in the world. And too often, we're allowing our voice to be muted. We're allowing our voice to be tampered or pushed down. Because we haven't been taught how to take a stand for ourselves. And the more I talk to people, the more I get interviewed, the more um, my name gets out there, the more I'm realizing that I'm just one woman who's deciding to take a stand for how she wants to feel in her life. And this goes above and beyond getting your children to listen to you. This goes above and beyond getting a good night's sleep or being able to eat your vegetables. This is a cultural revolution, and this is something way beyond me. And I'm just one piece to the puzzle, and you guys are other pieces to the puzzle. And I want you to know, one, that I hear you, and two, it is not my job to deliver your messages It is your job to take a stand for the life that you want to be living, for the impact that you want to make, because we have to do this together. And so I want to give a huge shout out. Um, Her name's Katie, so I'm not going to say her last name. So Katie, if you're listening to this, thank you for your message. So she wrote, Heather, I was listening to your podcast from yesterday, and you said to reach out if you had made an impact in our lives. And I never do stuff like this, but I can't stop thinking about the comments. So here we go. Well, I have to say your podcast has saved me and scared the crap out of me in so many ways. Last year, for the first time in my life, I felt depressed, which was the com- a completely new thing for me. So fast forward to 2019, and like any good girl... I made a resolution to snap out of it, but we all know that's not how depression works. So as I I was researching for anything to feel alive, I stumbled across your podcast as a thing for self-help. Game changer. Like, where the hell have I been? Anyways, I can't pinpoint the moment or day I listened to your podcast for the first time, but I can say I remember the day last week when your podcast snapped me out of my BS. So I have an important job. Am I the breadwinner, etc.? But what am I learning, like so many others, that success doesn't fill your cup like you thought it would? And being a working mom is hard. It's effing hard. I wouldn't even get into the amount of working mom guilt I deal with on a daily basis, especially in the summer. So as I, I'm being inspired by my new podcast life and trying to dig into who I am, What is my purpose and what is my soul telling me to do? I started backing off. I am way into feelings and intuition and always have been. And now that it's something people are talking about, I feel so connected and so scared at the same time. I feel like something big is going to happen and I'm scared to death, so I hold back. Long story short, I stopped listening to your pod because you inspired me too much. Of course, I don't realize this is what I'm doing until last week when I started backing up and listening to your recent interview with Susan Hyatt. It had me so motivated, I felt amazing and realized I've been slacking on my mental hygiene and have an awakening moment and realized I can't stop. But then I keep listening and you keep talking about fear the other day. I was like, holy crap, I'm doing that. I'm holding myself back from the greatest things because even though I'm miserable in my career, I'm scared of change. I'm scared of my power and I'm scared of doing great things. 
and I'm scared that I don't have a purpose because I don't know what it is yet. I know that's a lot to get to my main point, which is I don't have a fucking clue what my next step is or what great things I will do to move women, humanity forward. But if I slow down and peel back the layers, it will show itself that I am now sure of. I have to stop being scared because like you said, my freedom is on the other side of fear. So thank you for your energy. It has changed my life. And I'm so excited. I'm going to cry. I'm so excited to follow along on this journey with you and see where it goes. So thank you, Katie. This isn't about me. And so this is my rebuttal, my debate. When I hear people say to me, it's selfish to put myself first. It's luxurious. I feel guilty, Heather. Luxury, guilt, selfishness, all of these stories that you tell yourself where you feel like you are putting out others is a perfect example as what has kept us small as women. And so when I receive emails like this, my first thought is, I would have never received this email if I put myself last on my to-do list. I would have never received my, this email if I didn't put myself out there. I would have never received this email if I didn't take care of myself and share those lessons with others. So if I had to do all this work, if I had to do quote-unquote selfish things, overcome guilt, push through barriers, for you to hear my message. How is that selfish? And so as I rise and you rise, you help others rise. And this is how we change the world, ladies. It is not me holding everybody else up. It's not you holding everybody else up. It is you inspiring, becoming the person that you most desire other people to be and allowing them to choose of whether they are going to rise with you. So I didn't know what today's podcast would be about, but I want you to know that people are watching you and that when I ask for feedback and I say, have I inspired you? Let me know. I want to know why I inspired you. And typically it wasn't because of the 10 quick tips that I gave you on how to get your kids to listen to you or a bedtime routine or anything like that. People are inspired by who you are, your energy, and how you show up. So stop playing small. Do the uncomfortable things. And for the love of God, stop using guilt selfishness as the excuse to play small.